live. All right, y'all, it is time to get this thing going today. And uh, I'm staring at the guy that I have on this conversation for you guys. So if you're listening, you're watching, um, this is the first opportunity that I had to actually get a video aspect to these conversations. So I think it's gonna make it that much more organic. Um, it's gonna make it that much more free flowing. And I think I have the perfect guy in the line to, to kind of set it off in this format today. So um, without further ado, it is my pleasure, my joy, to uh, welcome Mr. Dr. Stephen Graff to the conversation today, brother. Um, so excited to have you on. Thank you for taking the time and uh, to shop it up a little bit. So welcome to the Coach Group Podcast, brother. Hey, so happy to be here. So happy to be here, Coach. Like, I always appreciate the opportunity to talk shop and see your face again and um, be able to rock and roll. Yeah, baby. And uh, we're going to set it off from the jump right from the get. But before we do that, um, if you can kind of provide a little background on who you are, Steve, um, kind of where you come from, you know, what's kind of gotten to this point, what you have going now, just a little bit of a lineage to provide a little bit deeper substance to who you are and what kind of base, um, where we go off that, brother. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, Northeast Ohio guy, so Akron, Canton area, born and raised. Had the great fortune of attending The Ohio State University, where I was a walk-on football player there. Sure. And player is a little bit of a misnomer, so I always joke around and say during my entire four years, I played two plays. Okay. So we were up about 45 points against Kent State, and that was my opportunity to shine. But won a national championship with the team in 2002 against Miami. Real classic triple overtime game. And then majored in psychology, got my bachelor's in psychology down there, and then went on to the University of Akron, so back into my stomping grounds, okay. where I got my master's in psychology and then PhD in counseling psychology, okay. which is really a framework and foundation of working with the worried well, individuals like you, myself, that just have the natural up and downs in life, but nothing too crazy or nothing too serious. And then during that time, I really found that I was um, kind of attracted to uh, the sports psychology realm. I kept going back to my athlete experience when I was learning new theories and interventions and opportunities to work with people. So uh, I cultivated the niche in that, uh, went on to Ball State for a year for my pre-doctoral internship, spent three months down at IMG Academy in Bradenton, Florida. Yep. Uh, I've served as a, a caddy, a college dean, a college right. professor, a rock band cover singer. <laughs> I was been a uh, sports psychologist at Ohio State for five and a half years before starting my private practice and now platform, uh, My Endurance. Got you. Got you. That's a hell of a lineage right there, man. Holy Lock crap. Up. <laughs> I love it. I love it. The breadth is wide, um, but I think that's a really powerful tool to be able to do all those different things at different spots in different enterprises because I think that only makes you better when it comes to when you actually hone in on a certain craft that you want to accomplish, because again, that breadth of knowledge and experience, um, I think that creates a lot more room for empathy and relatedness and things like that, um, which is so cool. Now, when it comes to sports psych, let's just jump right into this thing here. Um, and you kind of touched on it a little bit, but when it comes to sports psych or psych in general, what really gravitated you towards that field, that angle on psychology in particular? Was it your athletic background? Was it an experience that you had um, kind of something in between? Like what initially gravitated you toward wanting to pursue um, this profession? Yeah, I, it really started off as a young kid. I remember I'd go to the mall with my parents, as so many young kids do. And we'd walk around for a little bit, but then there'd always be that middle of the mall rest where okay. you'd sit in the middle of the mall and you just kind of watch people kind of going back and forth. And I found myself always intrigued by, look at all of these people and every single one of these individuals have their own particular story, right? Maybe they just got here from work or they're working on a family or their family's home and they got to buy a present or, you know, they all have these unique stories to them. And so uh, eventually though, and I never really knew it was called psychology at that point. I just had this yeah. interest behavior in, in human stories. And then I became 15, 16, and my interest in everyone's story kind of okay. narrowed by about 50%. Okay. So then I started really getting interested in kind of this dating type of thing and gender roles and what made women tick and men are from Mars and when women are from Venus. <laughs> there was a little more psychological type of element to that. But then it was actually my senior year with Tom McBride. Shout out Coach Tom McBride, boys basketball coach. He taught okay. a 
psychology slash sociology hybrid class uh, your senior year at Lake High School in, in uh, Uniontown, Ohio. Okay. And then, then it was actually, I was able to put a name with this field that I had this vague interest in. Hmm. Um, and though I dabbled a little bit, my older brother has always been a bit of a role model and he did uh, the pre-med thing. Now he's a sleep physician down in Charlotte. Uh, I, I dabbled in the pre-med thing early on at Ohio State, but then I took a biology class. It wasn't for me. Yeah. And then smooth sailing to psychology uh, at that point generally. And yeah. then I spoke a little bit to kind of where the sports site came in a little bit later down the line. Got you. No, that's perfect. And that kind of takes me back a little bit because I'm big into psychology as well. I think the mental aspect of anything that we do, um, it's such a big player. I mean, you can't really hide that fact anymore, especially with the new research and just people bringing awareness to it now. Um, it's a huge thing going on. And I can always remember back to when I was a player, whether it was basketball, football, baseball, whatever, um, for whatever reason, I always seemed to put myself in the position of the coach. So when they were communicating to me, you know, and how it was making me feel and did I want to actually do what he or she was saying um, because of the emotion behind it or the substance behind this, that, or the other, and how that kind of affected me mentally and how maybe it's affecting my teammates or people that are just witnessing this in general. That's where it kind of started for me. And kind of like you said, how you would be sitting in the mall and you're just thinking about these different things. I don't know really where or why, or, you know, how that kind of stimulated for me, but I feel you in that regard where it was, you know, an early onset, I think, um, where I kind of started to take to those things. And I think because of that now when I'm coaching or I'm doing stuff like this, I've had 10, 12, 15 years of quote unquote practice where I've always put myself in the shoes of the other people or whatever. And I think that's making me um, a better coach. I think a better person, a better fiance, whatever, um, because I kind of had had that quote unquote practice again since you know, maybe my teenage years or whatever it was. And um, I kind of digress. I kind of, <laughs> I was kind no, of re re reverting back a little well, bit. It's, it's um, interesting though, right? Like where do these patterns come from? I mean, now yeah, I'm like, it's easy to, oh, I thought in this type of way and I did these types of things and I had this coaching philosophy, but, and it's easy for me to sit here and say, well, I watched people as a, as a 10 year old, but why did I watch people as a 10 year old? What was yeah. it? That Aided the 10 year old Steve yeah. that influenced and built the pattern and programming and ways of thinking, acting, and feeling that made me interested in those types of things. And, yeah. you know, we can go down the rabbit hole on that, I'm sure. But 100%. Yeah. You know, I get it. I get it. And that's that why that I feel like I'm always chasing too is like, why was I like that? How can I create that or stimulate that in other people or kids coming up in my, you know, maybe it's my own kids or the kids that I'm coaching or whatever. Um, and again, yeah, it's most certainly a rabbit hole in terms of how to identify that. Maybe we will one day, um, but I'm still searching for it, which is cool because you keep searching for it in the right ways and more stuff comes about and whatever. Um, so, so a, yeah, out, out. Now, please. There's um, a researcher by the last name of Savickas. He was okay. based for a while in the uh, Northeast Medical College. And he created or um, identified a, a narrative uh, career counseling, um, a narrative career therapy, a narrative career theory, where essentially he said the type of career that you're going to be interested in solely has to do with some early childhood, late childhood experience that was so profound for you yeah. that it then carved the pathway of of going down uh, a particular uh, collegiate choice or um, an organizational uh, choice. So, for instance, uh, one person had uh, slammed a young kid slammed their thumb in a car door, and they ended up having to go to an ER. Okay. And so they were always so then they went kind of this uh, this medical route, and they were started off as a pediatrician, and they were they hated it. But then through this discovery, they found that one of these early experiences that were actually spent in the ER, that pediatrician switched over to the ER mm. and they a more fulfilled, happy doctor as a result of that. Yeah. Now, kind of interesting, but can certainly speak to the importance of some of these early childhood experiences. You're damn right. Yeah, that makes so much sense too. And, you know, kind of go to go down a different rabbit hole real quick. I've been really heavy lately on self-talk and things that you tell yourself and how you speak and how you act and how quite literally every single thing that you do 
matters because in some sort of way, whether it's the synapses and the neurons or, you know, whatever, whatever the case may be, like that's formulated in who you are currently, who you're going to become, how you're going to influence others, this, that, or the other. And I've been really heavy on that for younger kids or maybe even parents or coaches where, you know, it's not just, it's not just whatever to say certain things or do certain things in these environments of influence. Like you have to be purposeful in every single thing that you do because you never know when good or bad, happy or sad, a moment sparks like that. And it could push you in the right direction. It could push you in the wrong direction. You just don't know. And I think that's a really cool responsibility. It puts more onus on our shoulders now as people of influence or just people in general where no, like you matter. What you say matters. What you do absolutely matters. And it's not just, you know, it can't just be turned on and off. Like it's all there and it's all there for a reason. I think that's how we should be living our life. And am I perfect? Are you perfect at that? Of course not. We never will be. But I just think the perspective of that first and foremost is really powerful and it can kind of transform maybe who we are a little bit um, for the better. And uh, cause yeah, you never know when that switch could turn on and you're maybe influencing a kid that's going to go in a really good direction or a really wrong one for whatever. And maybe you don't meet it, maybe you do, but again, yeah, yeah. You got to be responsible for how you act. And I think it, it, it plays a, a, a much bigger part in the whole landscape of life than I think we realize sometimes. So. Yeah. You know, we got to just keep water in the bamboo. You know, we're in charge of water mm. in the bamboo, but we never exactly know when the bamboo is going to sprout. And there's a whole lot of activity that's going on underneath the surface that as long as we keep watering and fertilizing and watering and fertilizing that all the good work is happening beneath the surface. And then you know, the opportunistic aspect of life is that at some point that situation, the context, the timing comes together Mm. and that richness and that nutrients underneath here sprouts into something really, really good. And your point, it's tough to be 100% all the time. And that's not uh, realistic at, at all, but just understanding that we have a bit more onus and control and purpose and deliberateness behind what it is that we do to be able to cultivate and grow that bamboo out of the ground. Yep. Yep. That's dope. I love that. I love that analogy. And that brings me to something else. When I think about a good coach or a good communicator or a good teacher, um, I think of a great storyteller. I think of people who can relate everyday life to maybe some things that you're trying to get across. Um, And that's one thing that I think you do really well. So when I stalk you on LinkedIn or Instagram or whatever, and you have all these pieces of micro content, it always seems like more times than not, you're relating something that everybody for the most part kind of experiences in everyday life or goes through this. And you always work it back into um, a moment of teaching or knowledge sharing or what have you, because it's really easy just to state facts and just say the research finds this, or here's the statistic on this. Well, I don't find much connection to that. That's very transactional or I want some stuff to be transformational. I want to feel that connection where if you can take that stat or, you know, whatever the case may be and put it into a story, true or false, make believe or not, whatever, how can you make it more relatable so people take to it more? And that's when true learning takes place. And I think you do that really, really well. And I've tried to get better at that, whether it's on TikTok with these different dances that are hot and Mm. how can I look goofy and dance and be whatever, but at the same time, almost mixing the vegetables with the dinner, if you will, where, you know, you're watching me because it is entertaining, but at the same time, I'm sprinkling in these things that I think can bring benefit to your life or whatever. And again, I think you do a great job of that. So for you, like, have you always kind of operated like that? Is that something that you're kind of conscious or purposeful in? Um, why are you good at that? I'm going to pull you, you're good at it. Don't say, I don't know. You're good at it. I'm telling you, you're good at it. Um, where does that kind of come for you? And is that something that you're kind of purposeful with? Yeah. Um, well, I appreciate that. And I appreciate your desire to lean into some of these new social media mediums that are out there. Whether It's that's hard. Tech- it's hard. Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I got to check my pride a little bit. My ego like, hey, you can look stupid. It's all good as long as you're teaching something. Yeah. So there's a so there's a few things. I mean, I think by nature, I've always been a little bit of a performer. I felt comfortable kind of being in front of people. So I'm not afraid to ham it up a little bit. I'm not okay. afraid to maybe put something out there that might be a little less formal um, or traditional. So there's kind of that piece. I, th- I think probably I have a little bit of a verbal acuity, okay. you know, that would allow me to, I, I've enjoyed writing in the past. Um, 
you know, I've written songs in the past. Um, you know, I remember like writing poetry and stuff in various English classes. And whereas some classmates might struggle, then there's certainly others that it comes a little bit more naturally to. Yeah. So I think just some basic verbal acuity, I think is probably helpful. Yeah. Um, and then three, it's kind of that rich get richer type of thing where I've, I've just really enjoyed uh, and I enjoy metaphor. And for whatever reason, I just think a lot of times in metaphor. And so metaphors are very easy for me to identify um, with and make and make sense of. And then the fourth, kind of going a little bit more empirical, yeah. is I started thinking, well, how does somebody learn a foreign language and become fluent in a new language? Okay. They have to immerse themselves in that culture. Mm. So if yeah. I want to learn uh, the names of Spanish foods, I should go to a grocery store, and then when I see beans and it says frijoles, it's going to increase the likelihood that mm. I remember beans and frijoles, and that frijoles is beans in the future. Got so it. if I write a little blog or I do a video content about a light switch, and I create a metaphor that um, sometimes creating good habits is as easy as flicking the light switch, and that induces some positive thinking in that moment while somebody's viewing the vlog. Mm. The next time they interact with a light switch, I, love it. I've, I haven't proved this, but the hope is that the next time they interact with a light switch, there might be that little ping of positivity, that mm -hmm. little ping of habit formation, or that little thing that's like, ooh, light switch. I remember Dr. Steve said, da 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 da. Yeah. Oh, light switch. Now I'm feeling a little more positive, even by 0.5% than I did before I interacted mm. with you. Mm, mm. we could end the discussion right there and call it a day i i, I love that that was uh yeah that makes so much sense association right is that is that what you kind of call that maybe is association um association, yeah yeah and if one if we're all searching for being more fluent in positive ease how do you consistently learn that language mm. <sighs> You just, you, you just, you just changed my life, Steve. You just, uh, you just, uh, you just got me going a little bit. I want to, I want to, I want to go. Woo. I got you. I'm with you. Okay. Per per perfect. I'll be on the follow up part two. Yeah, damn right. We're going to have to do this uh, every day, the rest of the week or something. Um, well, perfect. Okay. Now I want to get into my endurance a little bit, which is the platform that you just came out with yep. um, some incredible stuff on there. I want to showcase that a little bit and you know, just to kind of get your perspectives, your angles on why you kind of established this and how you got it going and what are kind of the sub substance of it or what is the substance of it a little bit. So just generally speaking real quick, when it comes to my endurance, what is it? Why did you want to establish it? Um, and just kind of generally speaking along those lines, if you can touch on that, we'll get into specifics after. Yeah. Um, I'll try to give the, the abridged version because the more I think about this stuff, it becomes a little long. thousand percent. Yep. Um, but actually it started, I had a brief, I, I got back from my pre-doctoral internship at Ball State okay. and I was back home with my parents in Akron, Ohio or Uniontown, Ohio. And I was, I was, I needed to find a way to start making some money. So I just start. I kept, my endurance kind of came to mind, pun not intended. Yeah, yeah, um, sure. But for those playing at home, my endurance is a made up word. I made it up and it's a combination of mind and endurance and so mind is the thinking judging the planning decision making emotions that occur and then endurance is obviously this for the long term stamina fitness and so when you put those two together my endurance really starts to have this felt sense of what we would like to accomplish a more effective productive emotionally salient um mind and heart and spirit yeah and able to engage in that for the long haul oh. so i put together some brochures like a real basic wordpress website yeah 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 ended up getting one client that i did some basic mental skills coaching and ran it out of the library room okay and i really thank her as one of my mom's friends who was a, a runner and um she was like my first kind of like oh. entrepreneurial client dope but then things went in a little different direction. I ended up getting a full-time job. I was a college dean, was working in a group private practice, caddying a little bit. So then I started making more money and um, that went away <clears throat> until I started as a sports psychologist at Ohio State. Okay. So many of you would think that that was a dream job. And for myself, it was a dream job. And frankly, it still is a dream job. Um, however, I realized 
working full time as a therapist, as a psychologist, that I didn't have the bandwidth to do that. Okay. So about a year in, um, I had moved on from a relationship, a great relationship. One of those things where you just are, you're not. Yeah, connected. absolutely. Yep. Move on. And you. then from that, you, you have that kind of that come to Jesus moment, the shitter get off the pot. Like, okay, well, what's the new chapter going to be now? I'm on my own. Yeah. So I was at Ohio state. I took a trip to Thailand and Vietnam with a couple of high school buddies. What's up, okay. Brian? And, and read Tim Ferriss's four hour work week. Got you. And realized that I wanted to be able to dial up and dial down my clients in my own entrepreneurial way. So that combination of things made me realize, well, maybe I could meet with people virtually, dial up or dial down, take as much vacation as I want, maybe mm. even meet with people, take calls while I'm on the road. So I started thinking about how I could do that. Yep. And my endurance popped up. Understood. So I went part-time at Ohio State, started doing my endurance thing meeting individually with clients, all virtually, okay. doing in-person workshops and keynotes and different things like that. But for the most part, one-on-one -on -one kind of counseling and coaching for performance enhancement and stress management. Okay. And then fast forward this past uh, February. So February, 2019 19, yeah. was down in Florida, Sarasota, Florida with my buddy, Brett. Brett was a baseball player at Ohio state. And he said, you know, Steve, like I appreciate what it is that you do as a sports psychologist. I think I would have benefited from one during my time of pitching at Ohio State. Might have been helpful to just be able to call somebody and just talk to somebody real quick without having to go through all the bullshit that's associated yeah. sometimes. Yep. 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 Taking a bus, sitting in the waiting room. So then I started thinking like, okay, well, maybe there's a way to do that. So I started doing some research, looking into different softwares, and I came across this pay-per-minute telephone type of service. And connected with that they would white label and brand a website so i connected with that and i really wanted the focus to be on stress management and performance enhancement so we talk about the mental health continuum and we have severe psychological dis-ease on this third okay. we have basic stress that you and I and a lot of most people experience in this third. And then you have the individuals that really want to thrive and strive and enhance their mental performance on this side. Okay. There's great resources over here. Talk space, better help, uh, counseling psychologists, licensed counselors, social workers that really hone in on psychological dis-ease on the assessment, diagnosis, and treatment of psychological disorders. Nope. Yet, there's 66, 70% of yeah. individuals that yeah. are not operating over here. Yeah. So what about these individuals who mm -hmm. feel like, well, I'm screwed up, screwed up enough or, or anxious enough or depressed enough to warrant this type of stuff over here, gotcha. but I still want to sharpen the ax and or I still have some basic up and downs in life. So where do I fit in? Where's my role? Who can I interact with? So... We want to make it as easy and efficient and as effective as possible for them. We want to be able to provide choice of provider, choice of budget, choice of performance type, choice of location, choice of time in which they utilize the service. And so my endurance is checking those particular boxes. Does it solve every case? Is it meant to be the end all be all? Hell no. Got it. But I doing a pretty damn good job of satisfying this two third over here in particular with athletes, performing artists and professionals. Gosh, that's so cool. You did a great job at explaining that um, kind of took us on that roller coaster. And you know what, that's, that's really interesting because when I started my website and doing this stuff a year ago, I just kind of put coaching in general on there. So if you want any coaching tips, whether it's physically, mentally, emotionally, like I didn't, what, I don't know what I was doing. I'm like, yeah, I'm just gonna put it on there. See it. And a few people hit me up and Exactly like you said, where some people I think sometimes just want somebody to talk to, an ear to listen, um, you know, maybe give a little bit of advice here or there. But it really opened my eyes to exactly what you said, where there's that 66% where sometimes, you know, they don't feel like they know where to go with whatever they're dealing with or whatever. And, and, and half the time it was just conversation. They needed to get it out of here or out of here and onto something or somebody else and whatever. And once they were able to do that, them just kind of voicing it or talking through it they didn't need me. They just needed a voice to kind of, or, or an ear to kind of talk to you about it. And it was really powerful to see how 
you know, at the most basic level that doing something like that can really help people no matter who you are, or, you know, where you're coming from, or what you're doing, like um, conversation and coaching and stuff like that can be, can be a really cool gateway um, for people to work, shoot them stuff that, or work through, excuse me, some stuff that they're going through. Um, okay, perfect. Now let's dive into the, into kind of the pillars of what you have going on. Now you kind of mentioned there's four different pillars. Um, I want to touch on one just a little bit, cause I know people are probably listening right now where one of these different four pillars might pertain to them and they need the service. Great. So let's talk about it a little bit. And the first one is learn. And that's kind of the first one you talk about in your intro video, whatnot. So touch on that one a little bit, learn. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, imagine if you're a, a dancer, a ballet dancer, and you just, uh, sprained your ankle or you're having a tough time maybe you didn't get the, the the female lead or whatever and where do you go to get information about that where do you go to kind of enrich your mind about how you should be managing this or if you're a pitcher that's having difficulty throwing strikes because you're nervous how do you get that information my guess is you go to dr google which we all do, and that's i mean that's how i get my information a lot of times and then there's this and all sorts of great resources, all sorts of great information, but like, where do you turn to consistently yeah. Yeah. to get information on stress management and performance enhancement? And so my endurance learn is meant to be that consistent go-to for people to get vetted information. And so my endurance learn has a few different sub pillars to it. You right. have read and read are created articles by expert providers that also are the providers that provide coaching on the platform. Got so it. if you read an article and you like the voice or you think this person kind of goes at it in a cool way, you can actually meet with that coach. That's dope. And the coach gets exposed. Yep. So that's my endurance read. My endurance watch is every single time a provider writes an article, they also find a supplemental YouTube video that goes along with that particular article. Okay. So you read the article, you watch a YouTube video that's related. Maybe it's an athlete that's talking about confidence or something and then, or uh, um, some other aspect that's in the video. And then you have my endurance listen, which is the same type of thing based on what the provider created article wise, they then search for a podcast that's related and that podcast so gets posted as the as the podcast of the day so you have the article the video and the podcast that all relates to one another so if you're a visual learner you can mm -hmm. watch the video if you're an auditory learner you can listen to the podcast or if you like to read you can read the article so those three things are all freely accessible the fourth is my endurance study my okay. endurance learning study and that's going to be a collection of, of uh, e-courses and online courses that are quick hitters, 45 minutes to an hour where a provider has the opportunity to really deep dive into something they're passionate about, know a lot about, and can provide tactics and interventions and ways of thinking around it for the user. That's dope. And then the fifth piece of my endurance learn is my endurance research, where sport and psychologist uh, professors or individuals that are engaged in sports psychology, performance psychology research can list their research. And so the athlete and performers can go in and actually help fill out those particular studies because some of the toughest things to do sometimes is find uh, the population of people to fill out these studies for these researchers. So if all athletes and performers yeah. and high professionals are coming to this website, that's their target audience. So that's my endurance learn. It's an opportunity to engage with created and curated content that is all related to stress management, performance enhancement for athletes, performing artists and professionals. Yeah. I love that. I, and I love the way you broke up down how you can read, you can listen, you can watch. Um, Cause we all have our different mediums that we prefer. I'm a reading guy. I love to read. Um, so that's when I started the website, I started writing and I realized some people hit me up like, yo, one, I'm not that great of a reader, so I don't want to read your stuff. I know it might bring value. Okay. Or this, you know, I, I just don't want to read it. Simply put, I don't want to read it. Can you do a, a, a podcast or an audio format? And I had never thought about that because I'm just thinking about me. I like to read. Um, so I love that avenue of it because that's when I started the podcast video, whatever, to reach more people. So I think that's powerful. You don't just pigeonhole one way of doing so and you can rock it out. Now, did you say that the, the first three, the audio um, the visual and the, um, the reading piece are, you said those are free. Is that correct? That's all free stuff. Wow. Okay. Yep. Awesome. So people can go check that out and just see what's up. Fantastic. Okay. Perfect. Now, number two, now, now. Um, so let's talk about that one a little bit. 
Yeah, so so now is really the service arm of my endurance, and okay. that is the coaching platform. So maybe you've interacted with my endurance learn for a little while and you realize, okay, this stuff is good, but I want to take my learning to a deeper level and actually work with somebody that is knowledgeable. Right. So now my endurance learn, it is an on-demand pay per minute telephone based coaching platform where as a client you're able to search through provider profiles these providers all have master's degrees at least and have been vetted to be experienced have training in education in sport and performance psychology so this is not just a hodgepodge yeah. of of uh, therapists and professionals that you might find on psychology today or better help or talk space. And again, they're casting a wide net. Every single professional that you see a picture of on my endurance's website is at least masters and has been vetted to know sport and performance psychology stuff. Really cool. So you look through the profiles, you find somebody yeah. that's in your state or that matches your budget or that's available right now. You can send them a message or just call them right then and there immediately the Mindurance platform system connects you and you pay per minute for however wow. long you need to talk. It doesn't have to be 50 minutes, no yeah. 50 session. If you want to chat with somebody, it ends up being 17 minutes. Cool. Right. No, that's right. incredible. And I was looking at that list before I hopped on here just to kind of get a, an idea of what you got. And that was really cool. State, you know, background, whatever. And it gets us talking about that breath because we all connect with different people, different relationships, different experiences game boom like you're not going to connect to me as well as maybe you know he or she does off to my left hand like that's just the game and i think that's again really cool um so yeah people will definitely go check that one out i know i'm going to as well um so pillar three talking about live now live yeah so live is still being built out but the okay. uh, nut bones are pretty much there and okay. during live is is really an opportunity to connect with people and learn these things live so as a group so there's going to be webinars, live webinars that people can attend and just learn from the various Mindurance providers and myself. Um, and then there's Mindurance workshops. So maybe you're a business or you're a dance studio or a gymnastics academy or a ba basketball team and you want to bring in a Mindurance provider or an individual that does work on, pro on, the, on the Mindurance platform to do some type of workshop with, with your team or with your squad or with your crew, that's going to be an option there. And then what I also want to do is a my endurance conference, an annual my endurance conference where the keynote speakers and the individuals delivering the information are those coaches that do work on the my endurance platform. Okay. And then the kicker that can be attended by professionals that are in the sport and performance industry, but also the clients. Mm. So if the clients have interacted with these particular coaches yeah. throughout they have a chance to attend the conference meet face to face and do some more immersive workshop types of things as a group with that particular coach okay. so really kind of hitting it from all different angles there with the mind endurance live yeah no that's money and clearly you thought this thing out because my mind's going now like how how can i diversify myself a little bit now and do all this different stuff and that's uh yeah, and that's money. And that's one of the things that I think is really cool what you just said about how you can meet these clients in person where a lot of this stuff is happening virtually now. And that's just the way the world's going and it's all good. And I think it creates more resources, uh, more opportunity to learn and grow and seek the things that you need. But at the same time, I think there's something to be said about human interaction face to face. Obviously, we're doing it now on this video, but just something about feeling the presence of somebody, their voice, their emotion, their vibe, their energy. Um, so to have that allotted in there, I think is fantastic. So um, kudos to you guys. And uh, lastly, gear, which is where I'm at a little bit. So I you know we talked about association at the beginning of this thing, right? Where you see a light switch and you're associated with whatever. I'm trying to do the same thing with the brand. And I'm maybe thinking about different slogans or stuff to use. Um, so is that where you were kind of going with the gear in terms of that association piece? Or, um, you know, for me, quite for, you know, sometimes I sell a shirt and I use that for maybe some marketing or for whatever. Obviously, that's in there too. But you know, kind of the, 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 the macro vision of the gear for me is not just to sell a shirt for the sake of revenue or profit. It's more so that association piece. So is that kind of in play for you there? Um, what's kind of your angle when it comes to the gear stuff? Yeah, you named it. I, I think it. the first piece is, is that just brand kind of awareness marketing for the real basic stuff like the t-shirt yeah. and they look down and they see my endurance on their t-shirt and maybe they do an extra rep as a result. So certainly that piece too. So the, the brand awareness, 
um, that association kind of trigger words where you're literally able to wear your heart on your sleeve. Um, and then with the products, that can really expand too. Yeah. So, uh, you know, on right that right now are kind of basic water bottles yeah. Yeah. that are really for drop sipping. But in the future, as that becomes a bit more complex and, and robust pillar, things such as, um, you know, my endurance based journals yeah. or coffee cups that have mm. my endurance, your favorite my endurance phrase, and maybe yep. that comes from um, one of my vlogs or it's something that you yep. create, but the my endurance logo just happens to be on it too. So there's a lot of discussions around there. So you're absolutely right. It's keyword, it's association. Right also brand awareness and marketing um and just rounding out what i feel like are, are already three nice pillars yeah. with other potential revenue line as well not that i expect that these are going to come flying off the shelves for but sure 100 you know? percent. yeah you never know you're damn right out of you know i've had some people my last name is jacubic and i think that's a pretty unique name and people say Coob. so i've gotten people from california pennsylvania where i you know i, I see the order come in and the last name's Kubitschek or Kubasek. So, so I'll hit them up, you know, how'd you hear about the platform, whatever? Like, Oh no, I just, I just like, I just like the KUB on the front. Cause that's my last time. I'm like, okay, that works too. I like that. You know, whatever. Pollination, man. Exactly. Right. I'm like, respect. I'm with you. I, I actually feel that a lot. So you never know what direction it could go, I guess is what I'm saying. So I might as well put it out there and see what happens. Um, you know, that's perfect, dude. So again, those four different pillars and I'm going to post all this stuff on there. Um, when I post the podcast and the YouTube, so people can go check this out almost assuredly. Go pick up a shirt for myself, get my gear game going a little bit instead of hey. rocking my own stuff all the time. People looking at me like I'm crazy, like what the hell's that brand? Uh, <laughs> but uh, but no, no, but, yeah, uh, yeah. There you go, my endurance hat. I like that. My dad said he's like, yeah, you got to get a hat. I'm like, that. I'm not gonna make no hats. He's like, no, you got to make a hat. So I'm in the process of doing that too. And I love it. There's so many different directions to go with this stuff. So uh, uh, an ongoing uh, process with that, I guess, but, um, perfect. See now, before we go I'm to wrap this up a little bit and especially with these Friday discussions, I really try to give some tangible tactics or advice to kind of leave people with for the weekend or whenever they listen to this thing, just something they can apply to their life today. Um, in regards to what we talked about, the topics that we covered, that they, they can kind of take home with them. Um, and specifically today, I want to talk about habits a little bit, because I think right now where we're at, you know, at this point in time with the virus and everything going on, um, it's a phenomenal opportunity to start creating better habits for ourselves, or maybe a new way of thinking or, you know, a new workout regimen or whatever. Um, but when it comes to establishing those new things in our lives, I think there are certain tactics that can be really beneficial and aiding in that process. So when it comes to maybe developing new habits or something along those lines for ourselves, do you have anything to offer that people can kind of utilize now um, and kind of take with them away from this conversation today? Yeah, uh, just making the assumption that they already know the type of behavior that they want to engage in or the mm. goal outcome, because that's a whole other discussion of like, if you have seven different potential outcomes that you're going for financial fitness, physical fitness, social fitness, we could we could discuss which yeah. one do you feel like is the most important right yeah. now. So assuming that that conversation internally or externally with somebody else has happened, now it's a matter of actually putting those behaviors into practice. Mm -hmm. And I would say the biggest thing or a couple biggest things in my world, um, there is TNT. Okay. Okay. I'm T taking notes. Come on. Yep. TNT, blow it up. So the T is, uh, is making it too easy to fail. So, so often we feel like if we've been away from the gym that we got to go right back in there and do 60 minutes on the machines. And when I've been away from the gym for an extended period of time, I will literally, kid you not, start with one minute of exercise mm. the first day. And then the second day, two minutes of exercise. Gotcha. And then the third day, three minutes of exercise. And then in a month, you're back into 30 minutes of exercise and your neural pathways are cruising because you build it in an appropriate highway, concrete type of fashion. Understood. Okay. Too easy to fail. Okay. So that's number one. And then the T, the second T is the track it. You got to okay. track it. And there's power in, in tracking. Um, and so even a simple check mark of did I exercise for a minute on April 1st? Yes, I did. Check. 
did I exercise for two minutes on April 2nd? Yes, I did. Check. April 3rd, check. And what that accomplishes is number one, anybody who's ever created a to-do list knows how damn fe good it feels. Yeah, yeah. Check something off the list. Yeah. So that makes our heart flutter, makes a smile, makes, me feel, uh, makes us feel good that we're accomplishing something. And then the second piece is you get to see a streak. Okay. So as you track, you get to see a streak going on. And we don't like breaking streaks. Okay. I did it three days already. I've done it four days already. I got to do it tomorrow. I don't want to break the streak. So gotcha. That's another powerful thing to help with building a habit. Got gotcha. you. Uh, too easy to fail and track it. I'm with you. I'm going to start today on that and see what's up. And, you know, I think you articulated that really well because that's always something I'm high on too is where people want to jump right back into whatever they want to do. Or if it is something new, they want to go over, run, a, run a marathon around. Well, no, because just like anything else, you are who you are today because of progressive, you know, things over a period of time. And that's why you are the way you are, you know, as your foundation. It's going to be the same way when you're trying to build stuff back up where, you know, you don't get to be who you are in one day. You also don't kind of get away from who you are in one day either. So it's always going to be a progressive kind of lineage to achieving that stuff. So that's perfect. Um, that's fantastic. Well, Steve, that's all I got for you, but I got one more question that I kind of dropped the hammer on everybody before we head out to kind of put things into perspective, I think, and really, um, you know, I've talked about the macro vision of things a little bit, but when it comes to your macro vision um, for your life, so 50, 60, 70, 80 years down the road, your time is come and gone, you're dead in your grave, but the influence and the impact that you've made on people is still around, so they're still talking about you at this point in time. Um, what do you want people to say about you when that point in time does come? Uh, that Steve had legs. Steve had legs. He loved unconditionally. He experienced abundantly. He grew endlessly and he served generously. Bang, bang. You just dropped the hammer, man. I ain't got nothing to say after that. I threw my pen up in the air. It's all over with. Okay, legs. I threw my pen legs. Up. Use, uh, yeah, so you, you, you spitting the knowledge, man. You dropping it on us today. Um, well, no, Steve, that's perfect, dude. Thank you so much for your time today. And again, to everybody listening, I'm going to drop the links to that Minder and stuff on here. So make sure you go check that out. Check out the gear. At the very least, check out that free stuff in that learn section he was talking about just to see what's up because um, this stuff's important. I think, you know, you just never know what resource may be the game changing material for yourself. So if it's one person out there too, maybe it's a hundred, I don't know. But at the very least, go check it out and, and kind of give yourself an opportunity to see if this could be for you. Um, but besides that, Steve, I appreciate you, man. Thanks for coming on. Um, right, enjoy the rest of your day. Um, your vibes speak volumes kind of coming through the computer the, or, or the phone whenever I'm watching it. And it always puts a smile on my face again with those metaphors. But just, you know, the smile that's on your face and the way you're expressing this stuff, it's just energetic and it's gravitating. And I appreciate you for that. And uh, big things to come with mind endurance as well. So um, have appreciate a great one. Appreciate you, man. And uh, all the best, brother. Hey, likewise, John. Thanks for the opportunity. Thanks for those viewing at home and to be continued. Absolutely. And to everybody else, y'all have a great weekend. Um, I know we most certainly will um, as this thing's airing on Friday. So uh, God bless you guys. Coach Cool, we out.